What's going on YouTube? Welcome to another portrait painting tutorial live stream. So in today's video, we are going to create this painting that you're seeing here. You're going to see most of the footage. I'd say like 90, 95 or so percent of the footage. Some of the footage gets lost because I didn't tie up my hair. So you'll notice when that happens. I apologize for that in advance. Just a forewarning about that. So let's go ahead and start playing the painting footage now. It's important to understand that these demonstrations are created for you to follow along with in a long format. This is going to be about, this is, this is running about an hour and nine minutes with 20 something seconds. So this is going to be a live stream that's going to go on for a little over an hour. And you're going to get to ask me questions as you see down below you see the chat box there so any art related questions are encouraged now a little something different you are going to be able to see this hopefully um, in hd 1080p uh, so very high resolution compared to what you used to see i'm in a different location i have um, finally moved in with my wife after so many years uh, but anyway we're living in um in Alexandria, Virginia. We have, we've got our own apartment, so I have upgraded gear. So my computer is upgraded, thankfully. Um, the internet is upgraded significantly. So there you see my hair, right? I'm going to end up tying it later. So um, a lot of things have changed, and I'll talk about it in the future. All good things. So in terms of working with values, there's two values on here right now that you need to understand. The first value is the tone of the canvas. And I usually like to use a neutral gray tone. Uh, this is the same type of uh, canvas panel that you see there. Uh, it's, it's nice because with a gray, your darks look like darks, your lights look like lights. It's much easier to work with to have a perfectly neutral uh, in the middle value for your, um, your, uh, your canvases. Next is the drawing color. So I used a little bit of raw umber mixed with whatever was already on the brush because I did take that brush out of the freezer so it had something on it. Um, and it is not straight black and it's not too light. Raw umber or a burnt umber or something like that would be perfect on its own, but I tinted it a little bit darker um, with whatever was already on the brush. So, uh, like I said, this is a live stream. You're able to ask me any questions. I don't see any questions yet on the comments, but sometimes the comments freeze, and hopefully that doesn't happen with this technology. It shouldn't happen with this technology. So I'm going to test it out and write hello. Hello, world. My first comment on, um, on this computer. It's an upgraded computer. Hello world is kind of a funny, it's, it's kind of a, a joke for any of you that have taken any computer science classes. Um, so if you can catch that reference, that would be pretty cool. Uh, so now values, look at this. Now we're jumping into another value. So we're not going to talk too much about color this time, but I will tell you what colors I'm using because I remember when I did this. Uh, this is a ultramarine blue, phthalo turquoise, I killed it off a little bit. I'm pretty sure I killed it off a little bit with a lizard. But like I said, um, th this was my first video that I filmed in the new space. And um, I didn't use my, my uh, streaming software. So I couldn't actually see my uh, screen as I was filming. Because I was just using this this camera, which I'm going to uh, suggest to, to many of you to upgrade your cameras the way that you photograph your paintings. These days, a lot of times, what I'm seeing is people posting uh, photographs of their artworks uh, through through their, their smartphones. And these smartphones have really good cameras for taking pictures of, of real life, like people's faces and things like that. They're programmed like that. They have, um, they compress the values, let's just say, since we're talking about values. They're really good at taking pictures of, of us, of our environments, of Christmas trees or whatever. However, they are not good for taking pictures of your artwork because they have kind of an automatic filter in them. 
no matter how much you try, they're always going to have this kind of weird, especially if you have like a, a newer smartphone, like even if it's an Android or an, an iPhone, try to invest in a nice good old fashioned DSLR or um, a point and shoot camera that's that doesn't have all the filters. DSLRs are good. Um, pretty good way to go. You can get some pretty cheap ones um, these days, uh, cheap used ones. Value wise and shape wise, we've just added something new here and I still haven't seen anything on the comments. So um, for those of you, anyone watching this live, please feel free to just tell me where you're watching from. That's one of my favorite questions to ask. Sometimes we get the Netherlands, sometimes we get uh, India, sometimes we get um, Brazil. So let me know where where in the world you're watching this from. And I'm going to keep talking about values and shapes now. So um, we are starting to add a dark shape, a dark mass for the um, for the eye socket. And above that, we're starting to add our first skin tone. Now backtrack, this is where we're heading. Okay, this is where we're heading. And this is how we're getting there. So this picture is going to be posted. The picture of this painting is going to be posted on uh, my Instagram. Right after I finish this live stream, I'm going to post this picture. So if you want to paint along with this video, please use the picture of the painting and not any photo reference. The photo reference was taken from a copyright free reference. I've got the proof in case I have to show proof for it. But it is not going to help you to look at the photo reference. If you want to follow along with the painting, I recommend that you do so with, uh, and let me see if I can put this above so you can see it in front of the chat. There you go. So um, this is going to be better for you to follow along with painting from the picture. And I promise I'll post it on my Instagram and it's linked in the description box of this video because I have simplified everything for you in this painting rather than you trying to look at a, a photo reference it, it's better for you that way so there you can see my hair is blocking it so we're going to get to the point now where i'm going to start to edit stuff out i am sorry for my hair i, I tied it up today i'm going to continue to tie it up and uh sorry i'm really sorry about that so leon wrote true true if we buy pigments and paints for hundreds thousands of dollars then a good camera, a good lighting is important in investing. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. This is the 2020s now, so um, it is good to invest in your camera. Because let's face it, most of the time people are going to see, the majority of people that are going to see your artwork are going to see it online. It's not like in the old days where we would only have our paintings in a gallery and that would be the only place people would see them, would be in the gallery. It's it's different now. This is the, this is the future. Uh, so a good, good comment there, Leon. Thanks for watching from Sweden. And again, everyone, it will get better. My hair is thin. It's going to be in the way for a while, but it'll get better. Just bear with me. It will get better. Value-wise, it's very simple. You've got a generic mass for the, the skin tone. I do start off a tad bit darker in order to add light to it because it's easier to do that in Alla Prima. I have a simplified dark mass for the uh, the headdress that she's wearing, the thing she's wearing on her head, and um, and a light background. I like. Do you see this from the left? It's light, middle, and then dark. I have this like window of value that allows me to work more efficiently. Hey, Bean Pot, thanks for watching from Massachusetts. I don't know how to read your username, but thanks for watching from the Netherlands. Where is everyone? It seems really kind of like a quiet crowd today. There goes that. See, so I lost focus because not only did he probably forget to check that his hair was in the way, but he also forgot to turn off the autofocus. Oh, man, sorry about that. But I will continue to explain it all to you much better than if this was live, like the live painting. Forget about it. I would I would be stressed. So what you see now is a generic shape for the nose, a dark accent there. That's going to be a plane change. Now that right there is the beginning of planes on the face. We did begin with the eye socket, but this is our first major uh, plane change. Hey, Bean Pot, early stream. Yes, it is an early stream. And that's another announcement that's going to happen now. Because I have moved, um, I've, I finally I was living in a really bad place 
with my wife before this, and now we're in a good place, like a really good place. Very, very happy, very excited. I mean, great place. Um, and um, these live streams will now, I always say this, but they will now start to become more consistent at a consistent time because I now have my own place and I don't have to worry about my environment getting in the way. So we will start to have a more consistent schedule around this time for these public live streams. This is around 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. This will be available as a pre-recorded video completely for free for everyone to watch after it is over. Over time, we will get used to this schedule uh, because my wife does come back from work uh, around like 3.30 or about like 3.45 my time, Eastern Daylight Time. So I can't do the later streams because it's a small space, but it's ours for the time being. Uh, but but yes, we are in a good place. In a good place. Yes, I'm very happy about that. Uh, so let's get the questions uh, coming. Keep the questions coming. Uh, so from Dale, thanks for watching from Switzerland. From Leon, is that cadmium red with cobalt mix for the violets? Good question for the violets. Um, I used, I believe, um, if you're talking about the darks on the... Well, there's two types of violets here. There's the dark kind of blue for the headdress. And that's pretty much just ultramarine blue and phthalo turquoise killed off with a little bit of a lizard, which does make it go violet. The background is white and cadmium red for the most part. So it's pretty much like a pinkish violet. And the cadmium red that I'm using is a cadmium red that's a little bit more orangey. Cadmium red vermilion from Michael Harding. There is a little bit of violet in the skin color, and if you're curious about the basis of the skin color, it is uh, dioxazine, purple, cadmium, yellow. Dioxazine, purple, cadmium, yellow. Purple and yellow neutralize each other out and create that kind of like, um, that warmish uh, skin tone that you have there. Also, you're seeing cadmium red with ultramarine blue. Contrary to making a blue, Cadmium red, ultramarine blue together will make kind of a neutral kind of violet that's kind of brownish. And then I added cadmium orange to it and then a little bit of Indian yellow to create the skin color that you're seeing here. I will be implementing a variety of different um, ethnicities, skin colors. Um, there you see I edited that right there close up because my hair was in the way. Again, I'm sorry about that. Um, so I will be doing more of a series of multi-diverse portraits. Um, that is my aim. I want to do incorporate more diversity in my portraiture these days. Um, it's just something I'm aspiring to. And I'm going to use, again, copyright free images. I'll take pictures of, of uh, friends if they let me to, to paint them. But I want to have a little bit more diversity. Um, than probably what you've seen uh, most portrait painters do uh, these days. So, um, hey, Red Angry Bird, I like your username. Thanks for watching from Australia. So, in terms of the colors, it's very simple. Like I said, for the basis of the skin color uh, to the lips, the lips is going to be a little different there. So, since this is a wet on wet painting, it's going to go through what's called an awkward stage. So would I ever want people to see it like that? No. Uh, can you believe that the lip starts like that and then ends up like that? And it's because I'm working with shapes. I'm working with masses. So it's like clay. I'm gathering the clay around and I'm pushing the clay because it's three-dimensional. Things like that. Things like that. Almost looks like kupow, like smacked in the lip or something like that. That's what makes the awkward stage so difficult. It's because with a portrait, it's not like when you're painting an apple or you're painting a tree or you're painting um, a portrait of your favorite Diet Coke. Um, I wish it was caffeine free. But anyway, it is because, and again, sorry for my hair, it is because there's something psychological there. Remember this. There's something psychological there about Yupari's bad hair. Um, there's something psychological about an unfinished face. And I say this all the time. An unfinished face is a nightmare. 
It is things that you see in scary movies. It is terrifying for most of us. With experience and patience, patience is something you build, you will not be as bothered by that. Um, so let's get uh, some more questions here. So from Leon, uh, it's very similar to manganese violet pigment code PV16, but a bit darker. I remember from a previous video, you mentioned cobalt. That's why it was so specific. Oh, I love using cobalt blue. If I had room on my palette, I would use it more. But let me tell you something. Cobalt blue is very expensive. You know that um, cobalt blue is very expensive. So I found kind of like I can get cobalt somewhat in between ultramarine which leans towards the violet and thalo turquoise which goes a little bit towards the yellowish somewhere in there i can manage to find cobalt blue um, so i can do without it for the most part now with these um, skin colors it's taken me a while to compress my palette to the point where it's at but it's a very efficient palette not that many colors and again, that's listed in the description box of the video for you. Uh, hey, Lemus. Oh, thanks for watching from Texas. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This is, by the way, my first time. Most consistent HD 1080p. Thank goodness for technology and internet. My internet has almost like quadrupled. It's more than quadrupled in speed. Um, and the uh computer apparently is handling this very well the um the hd except for my hair now you see my hair in hd like who wants to see my hair in hd um so question from lady death uh could you explain the use of uh for emerald and viridian and how old masters would use it for portraits oh sure sure so if you look at a lot of rembrandts in, in particular i'm always going to go to rembrandt around um underneath of lips and this is with a very specific skin color it's not going to work with every skin color and it's not going to work with this one quite as much um but with um uh, for example underneath of lips because this tends to be more warm with this specific type of skin tone yes this is live so you can ask any question i'm not painting this live i'm uh, narrating it to you live so that i can kind of you know focus on the commentary separate from the painting um, so yeah there would be more greens underneath of the lips and across from the nose as a convention to push the warmth of the nose the lips and underneath of the cheekbone right around here there would be somewhat more of a, a greenish with pretty much all skin colors because all skin colors are slightly warm so even the skin complexion that you see here if you look at the finished one there's going to be right underneath of the cheekbone a tad bit cooler a tad bit more towards the green but here the skin colors the highlights actually start to lean towards the blue so a little bit of thalo turquoise mixed with cadmium orange to kill it off a little bit was used there um, old masters would also push kind of a greenish cool by the concavity of the eye socket which i did there already it is just a convention for portraiture any skin color right around there because right here, if you press right here underneath of your tear duct, that's pretty much bone. Uh, it's like pretty much bone. So uh, putting that cooler color, putting that, that cool color onto the um, side of the eye socket where there's a, almost pretty much just bone actually kind of for some reason adds more uh, liveliness to the face. I'm not sure why. So in terms of values, we've got five perhaps five specific specific values there you've got light and shadow so you've got light and shadow there you've got a mid-tone for the side of the eye socket a mid-tone is just a middle value it's a specific plane the nose the side of the cheek and the eye socket all fit that plane now we have a dark accent which is the accent for the eye uh, eyelash the nostril the eyebrows pretty much all of the darks is going to be that dark accent and then you've got a highlight so that's five main values there on the face with these five values we're pushing these values around and we're sculpting out the shapes so that it is much much more 
dimensional. Like I said, I, I did edit out a little bit because my hair got in the way, but not that much. I didn't edit that much of the video out. So from this point on, I had already recognized um, that my hair was in the way. So I made a point to actually back up and make sure that it wasn't in the way anymore. So a little bit uncomfortable. Actually, my arm was pretty much this high. And when you have a side palette like that, I don't recommend you do that. Um, it may look neat when you have your palette right next to your painting. I don't recommend it. It's going to tire out your arm. If you can hold your palette, it's more natural when you have a handheld palette and you're painting like that. It's, it's much more, more natural that way. So, um, a question that hasn't been asked yet, which usually is asked at this point, is um, about my brushes. I still have some unopened ones uh, of this brand. I really like them. They can take a beating. They're really, really good brushes. These are bristle brushes. These are Silver Brush Grand Prix. These are um, all size 4 extra long filberts. For the detail work, which I didn't get yet, and that, by the way, there is a size 2 filbert. This, by the way, here, these are, I've only got two new ones left. I have to get more. Uh, these are by the same brand, Silver Brush, and these are, um, they're called Sable's Cat's Tongue uh, Renaissance. So they're pure red sable cat's tongue shape, not made from cat's tongues. It's just the shape, and a size 4. Hey, Lady Death. Oh, no worry. I like your username. Um, yeah, uh, actually, for the past two weeks up until now, I've been in the process of moving, and there's still, you can probably still see some boxes um, behind me. So I have been in the process of moving, so I've been kind of out of it, um, just internet-wise, uh, for some time, um, but we are... We are back and we're going to be more consistent. As long as I have painting footage available, as I can, as many as I can film, then we are going to continue doing these streams more consistently. So, now in terms of values, again, it's still pretty much five main values. And on the palette, you see there, I didn't really organize it like you have seen me do from the past, from light to dark. Instead, it's pretty much light, something pink, and then dark. On the bottom, it's the blue, darkish, and that's about it. You see that there. And it's not so much that it's disorganized. It's that I'm doing a lot of the mixing on the canvas itself. Hey, Leon, do I paint using grisaille? Uh, so, a grisaille, for everyone that's wondering what that is, is... Um, and monochromatic underpainting done so that you can layer color over top of it more easily. And do I personally use grisaille these days? No, I don't really use grisaille as much these days because it takes more time and time is money. Um, as a full-time artist, if I'm spending a lot of time on the painting, I have to charge more for the painting and I need to have some kind of balance there. Uh, time is money. However, when I'm teaching, for example, my online classes, I start you out with a grisaille. I start you out actually with a transfer drawing to a poster image of light and dark to a grisaille. So in my online classes, I start you off, and when I'm teaching in person, by the way, more information about that later. Uh, but I start out students with a grisaille because it is... See, it is <laughs> Seaford, that's my uncle's name. It is um, safer. It is safer than jumping right in with color and, and mapping it out this way. One, one con to it, though, is that when you're working in monochrome, it is a little harder to find your mistakes than you're, when you're working in full color, like you're seeing here. In full color, the mistakes are right in your face, which is also why... It's, the awkward stage is a little stronger when you're working in full color. Hey, Libertas. Hello there, hello there. And um, in the future, everyone's been asking if I could announce when I'm going to do these streams. That's going to happen soon. 
I just need to get into the flow of um, basically being in my own place and filming and uh, I just need to get into the rhythm of things because I just moved um, but it, it's looking like this time frame is going to be the most uh, my, my go-to time frame because it's not too early in the morning for me and it's not uh, it's not too late I think uh, so it's kind of perfect time frame because right after this I'm going to uh, be with my students on zoom I'm actually going to zoom with them at um, 12 o'clock p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. So pretty much like, I don't know, like an hour or so after this ends, I'll be on Zoom with them. Hey, Leon. Uh, oh, yeah, it does take weeks, sometimes two months for a good underpainting without any additives. Yeah, um, for an underpainting, I would always recommend everyone use fast dryers. So alkids are going to be your friend with underpaintings just because you want the, the earlier layers to dry much faster than the uh, the later ones. So now you're seeing it's still five values primarily and most of the painting is actually going to be five values and some edges. So the light on the face as you see there that plane the value didn't change the color did and the size of the the shape of the plane changed like clay you're pushing that plane around not necessarily adding another to it but you're pushing that plane around and making it more specific now the color um the color was a little bit more blue like i said so i ended up using some of the background color that you just saw there and you're seeing me use it also in the darks to add more contrast to the planes So you can now see the trajectory. From this point on, you can see how this is heading towards there. Still mainly five values and some edges. Five values and some edges. Think about it that way. Simplify it for yourself. Five values and some edges. Um, most John Singer Sargent portraits, which is who I was thinking of, mainly who I'm thinking of when I'm doing these. I'm thinking of Sargent and I'm thinking of Nelson Shanks and I'm thinking of Rembrandt. Um, but most of what you see is very, very simple values. Simple values that read in a relatively correct place with some edges. And now you see right under there, as I said, I was going to add something cooler to contrast with this, keeping the color changes a little bit more exaggerated in order to keep the value changes to a minimum. So let's see, user 106, let's see, uh, you wrote, I like your content, it's awesome, I'm terrible, but less terrible than I would be if I listened to some other channels. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for that comment. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I really enjoy being able to to help you. And these days, I'm trying to pay a little bit more attention to YouTube. Um, I'm a, a very, 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 very beginner uh, pocket billiard player, a pool player. So I do consume a lot of YouTube in order to uh, learn information. Sometimes the short videos that like tell you exactly what to do in a concise way are helpful. Other times they're not because you want to actually see how people play a game, not necessarily what they tell you to do, but what they actually do. So um, that's what this type of video is about. It's not, I'm not just telling you in like 10 minutes, five simple values and some edges and do the rest on your own. You're seeing it all happen in, in uh, real time. Some of it was edited because my hair, but from this point on, nothing is edited. Um, so... I hope that this type of content uh, helps you out. Back like a month ago, I was uploading my uh, virtual classroom to YouTube that did not pan out well with the algorithm. But um, but anyway, we're going to keep this type of uh, video 
because it's it's much more manageable for me and um, I hope it's more clear for you as well. So once again, a color change just happened where I'm keeping the value change to a minimum. But that right there, a little tap, 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 that's edge work. I'm not necessarily adding a plane there and I'm just softening the edge between one plane and another plane. Some planes on the face are going to be sharper than others. Some are going to be softer, and it all depends on the topography of the structure that you're painting. This right here is softer. This right here is sharper. Pay attention to that edge. It's not a zillion values to render it. It's just a few with some edges in the right spot. That's the key. That's the key. That's how you get to the point where I'm at now in this painting. Hey, Leon. Oh, I'm so glad you like this format. Oh, good, good. I'm so glad. Yeah, of course. It, it gives me a way to reflect. You're absolutely correct. Um, it gives me a way to reflect on what I had done. Because when I'm painting, like a lot of the times, I don't really think about it. I don't think about, like, and, and this is very weird. And I can, if anyone plays pool, uh, you can relate it to pocket billiards because they're, when you're first learning how to aim a shot, you really got to think about it. Like you really have to know what angle you're in and what aiming system you want to use. And you really got to um, have a system. When you're learning to paint, it's the same. You've got to have a system or else things are just going to go all over the place. Once you have enough experience, that system is going to become automatic. Which is why it's so difficult for me and for, I guess, everyone to paint and talk at the same time. This is much easier because I can show you what I'm doing and reflect. So you're exactly right, Leon. So uh, from up and coming artists, I like your username. Question, what size canvas is good to use for portrait? Uh, you know, this is the size that I'm using right now. It is, you see my head fits in it. Um, so if you were to chop my head off and put it in here, it kind of almost fits. Um, this is an 8 by 10. Uh, so 8 by 10 inches. Um, however, you know my favorite size is 12 by 16 inches. That's my favorite size. Um, let's see. Yeah, 11 by 14 is, is more than okay. That's perfectly fine. 11 by 14 is not bad at all. 11 by 12 would be fine. I like I like 12 by 16 because it's longer. So you can have more of like a traditional portrait with like the, like a collar and things like that. Maybe even a background. Um, so I personally like 12 by 16 for a face. Uh, I just like larger paintings in general. But I'm doing 8 by 10s. And um, I'm doing a lot of 8 by 10s these days. Um because I'm going to be selling these and it's easier to it's easier to ship them basically 8 by 10 is pretty much like the perfect size if you're looking to sell paintings it's not too small and it's not too large but to answer your question I would go with 12 16 for a standard head um, 12 by 16 inches uh, but good question good question so uh, since we were focusing on values and you see now there's quite a difference between where this was even 20 minutes ago you see the highlight on the nose it's still five values and some edges we're just now refining these values and i'm deliberately not showing you a photo reference for this because this is your photo reference right here i'm simplifying everything for you and once this is done, as soon as this is done, I'm posting this to Instagram and you're going to be able to use that for yourself to recreate this painting. And I do have a Facebook group specifically for these live painting sessions, these painting tutorials. Um, again, this is the 2020s uh, live videos. So it does, I think it, it's a little better, I think for most of you than the pre-recorded and this is a mix really this is pre-recorded and live so um live stream is pretty much going to be the way to go um, but 
you will have that posted to um, to the Instagram. And you can paint along with me and you can post it to the Facebook group created specifically for viewers of this um, channel. Now you see I've switched to the sables. Here is a, a nice bit of advice. Remember, five values and some edges. The edges are so important here with a uh, profile, a three quarter closer to profile. This is pretty much profile, but we've got a thin sliver of the other side of the eye. You see that edge right by the nose, the sharpness of that edge and the specificity whenever you're doing a profile, remember this, anything close to a profile. And again, there I am kind of blurring out an edge, high values and some edges. So the edge on the nose was sharper to pull focus and add more specificity. Same thing happened down here, same thing happened on the chin. In contrast to that sharpness, now we're using just a, any kind of dry, soft brush to basically like a sculpture, just kind of smooth out the surface. Doesn't mean I'm adding extra values, I'm just making it more smooth. Oh, thank you for the season's greeting from the Bahamas. That sounds like a nice place to be right now. It, it What's the temperature outside? Temperature outside. It's 37 degrees outside. 37 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm, lo I'm so happy. I have central heating. I haven't had central heating for, I think, probably close to three years, maybe four years. I haven't had central heating. Oh, this is great. I've got central heating and AC in this place. I'm in a good place. I'm very, very happy. Um, but now you see the edge, right? So I'm not adding, adding anything extra. That brush is the proof. And I'm not per se blending because here's the difference between softening and blending because we're talking about edges. And for some people, they always say, Artists that blend go to purgatory. Have you ever heard that one before? Artists that blend go to purgatory. Well, let me clarify the difference between blending and softening. Okay, are you ready? Because this is very important. The difference between blending and softening is blending in its negative connotation is the deliberate pushing of one color into another color to create a value, a new value. Sometimes you actually want to do that. But if you want more control, softening is the way to go. So create your plane change deliberately. Each one of those plane changes were done deliberately. And then you just knit in between the planes with a soft brush to create a smooth edge. You see the difference now. Blending is deliberately pushing one plane into another to create another value. Softening is already having that plane delineated and just softening the little edge, the tiny edge in between. The difference is when you're blending in the negative connotation, it's a big swoop to create kind of a blended edge or a blended value. When you're softening, instead of a big swoop, it's just like a little that, and that's all it is. Uh, hey, Leon, shading 101, is that what you would like me to talk about? Um, or is it what we're doing here? Because hopefully this is talking more about shading and values. And by the way, light background with darker skin colors typically works better than darker background darker skin color. This is why chiroscuro is, this is actually chiroscuro in a different form because chiroscuro, as you, if you think about Caravaggio, is dark background, light skin color. You can do this with darker skin colors too. You can have uh, a darker background, darker skin color where more of the highlights show. You can do that too, but it's actually a little bit harder so this is still, in its essence, chiroscuro. So Leon, are you using a reference? Three-quarter perspective profiles are most difficult. Getting a perspective right can be a, bit, a trick with the eyes and cheeks. It looks very good. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, 
Leon, you wrote, yeah, I meant what you're talking about is the core issue about blending colors. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. That is exactly what I'm talking about. The issue with um, blending versus softening because there is a difference. Uh, so yes, I was using a reference. This is from Pexels. Um, I'm deliberately keeping the reference from everyone because I want the best for everyone. I want you, everyone, to use, like I said, use this as your reference and not a photo reference. Why? Because Upari is simplifying the process for you so you can recreate the painting that I'm doing for you. And you can use this as a guide. This will be one of the best ways for you to learn on the internet completely for free. Now, if you want to take your art education with me further, again, links in the description box to the online classes. But yes, there is uh, so much to be understood here about um, values and the efficiency about the values. And as you see, the form is already starting to read, like from a distance, if I were to stand up and to look, it already reads like a face. We don't need to be bothered by the exact likeness because it's not a commission. So you need to know the difference between a studio painting and a commission because there's a difference. There's a big difference. And if you look at Rembrandt, if you look at Sargent, if you look at, um, if you look at Velasquez, if you look at um, Nelson Shanks, uh, if you look at all these big names in art history, there is a difference between studio painting portrait as fine art versus commission. And we always want to do commissions in such a way that we are free to do what we want, but that's just not the case. If you're painting a senator or something like that, like, um, or you just have a really picky client, then the likeness is something that is going to be something that you need to um, get perfectly. And what I would recommend you do is just project it, uh, trace it uh, to get the exact likeness. Because if you have a, if you have one of those clients, and if you've done portrait commissions before, you know what I'm talking about. If you have one of those clients, trace it, trace it. There's no cheating involved in tracing. It's just outlines. Trace the darn thing because that's what they want. They want they want an artist filter on a painting. They want an artist filter photograph as a painting. They're paying lots of money for something that they can just print out and put a filter on. That's what it is. Some clients are like that. The good ones actually let you paint as you would and you don't have to worry about that. But those clients are rare, very rare. So from up and coming artists, uh, you wrote, uh, thanks for your input. Eight by 10 is the beginning range. There's no real beginning range. You know what I, I would suggest? Um, eight by 10 is nice because it's not a big commitment. Um, they're typically cheaper to work on. So yeah, I would suggest eight by 10. But if you wanna do something a little bit more involved the bigger the better um but yeah i would agree with you that um eight by ten might be a little bit easier for um, a, a beginning range there so uh let's ask a question for everyone a question that i typically ask and um i'm gonna write what is on your easel what is currently on your easel and nothing is a valid answer as well so for example on my easel right now i have this painting is still on my easel so there's that i've thinned out the paint a little bit i actually i should have used neon mcgill for that but i just used odorless mineral spirits just gamsol is what i used for that um Hey, Lady Death, you really like the way you explain how clients want an artist filter. It's, it's, it's true, unfortunately. A lot of clients, they just want their picture copied and pasted on a canvas with an artist filter. That's what they want, unfortunately. Um, but yeah. So user 106 writes, smudge painting is cheater painting. There's no real cheating involved in painting. Um, maybe in the beginning we can think that but not really there's there's no cheating involved even in tracing 
like if if you were to give me the perfect outline of the Mona Lisa, I'm still going to have a hard time finishing the Mona Lisa. So the outlines are not going to be everything. It's just what a client wants. Um, it's, it's just what a client wants. So user 106, two portraits and a cat. Awesome. Awesome, awesome cat. Cat paintings tend to do pretty well. I should probably do more of them myself. Good idea there. So two portraits and a cat. Let me tell you, the only there's only one way to cheat in in um, all of art. There's only one way to cheat. And that is if you take credit for something that someone else did. That's the only way to cheat in painting. Literally, the only way to cheat, to cheat in painting is to uh, say you painted something you didn't paint. That's really the only way to cheat. Uh, so now I'm covering the background a little bit more, uh, pretty much all of it, because I like that look. It's kind of like almost like flat. But you're still going to be seeing more of the light on the top left quadrant because I even still, even though something this simple, I'm thinking of a main diagonal. And there's a main diagonal going across from the bottom left, there it is, to the top right. Hey, user 106, it's your cat. Oh, okay. No worries. Lady Death, I have watched, I have Wednesday from Netflix on my easel, which I just completed. You know, I was just thinking about that, the, the Wednesday. The, man, she is an icon. Um, my wife and I just finished watching it also. But, I mean, like, make sure to do that little the little Wednesday thing um, on your own whenever you want to cheer yourself up. It's, it is hilarious. Uh, I don't know how she did that, especially when people say she had coronavirus during that scene. But it's... Pretty cool. That's one of my favorite um, TV shows next to The Walking Dead these days. Um, here, Rob CP. So from Leon, working on a large frame underpainting, but I'm still on the underdrawing stage at the moment. Soon I'll lay down some raw umber and whites for me to colorize. Takes time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That process does take a while, but it is more accurate. So from Jesse, he wrote, your painting of I don't know how to pronounce that name. Is on your easel. Not sure how to pronounce that one. Rob CP, you've bought some Gamvar varnish. Oh, of course. I'm glad you you have the Gamvar. I'm glad you like the recommendation. That right there is my fan brush, which I need to replace because it is it's got dried paint all over the top. Um, all that is, and you notice I did it in one. Um, one specific direction, left is right, right is left, uh, whatever. I did it in uh, that direction because that's where the light is coming from so that uh, it wouldn't glare as much for me. So where are we now? We've got maybe like, let's go to the, we've still got 21 minutes. So there's a lot of kind of like slowing down. Not a lot's going to happen in a very, uh, not a lot's going to happen in a long time frame. So in order to get from to the left to the right, as you see, it's just some little refinements. As you see, the nose is going to get a little refinement. The mouth is going to get the slightest little refinement, but not very many things are going to happen. And this is the part that puts everyone to sleep. This is the part that bores everyone. And this is what's usually edited out of painting videos these days. So um, because this is a little bit more slow, now you see that I'm adding more light to the top left again to have that um, main diagonal. Now we're going to increase our conversation. Once it starts to slow down, we're going to increase the conversation. So as you saw, I added a little bit more red to the top left because I wanted more color contrast. All right, so next question for everyone. And every time I ask this question, nobody wants to admit it. Um, but I'm going to ask it anyway, because this is very, this gives me an idea of what kind of videos to create. Um, so what 
do you struggle with in art? What do you struggle with in art the most? I said art because it could be composition, it could be motivation, it could be a lot of things. Um, but what do you struggle with? Oh, hey, hey, Barbara. Good morning. Thanks for watching from California. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have you back here too. And um, uh, hopefully this time, this, these earlier times are better for you because the online classes are going to be a little bit earlier now um, because of my wife's work schedule. And I'll explain more of that on Patreon. But it's great to have you here, Barbara. So from Rob CP, question. How do you know where to have soft and hard edges? And how do you know... How soft to make an edge? My guess is hard edges focus the viewer's attention. Exactly. That's one. That's one of them. So let's let's do hard edges first. So one of them is it is um, to bring the attention. You're correct. Like the edge of the nose, the corner of the tear duct for the eye. That right there is to bring attention. That's one reason for a sharp edge. Another reason for a sharp edge is going to be, it's just physically a sharp edge. Like, if this was a still life painting, this is a coaster. Right here, it's just physically sharp. It looks, it's almost like a razor. So some areas are just physically sharper. Um, and they would look strange if we didn't make them sharper. So, on the face, some planes are physically sharper like the eye socket, the side of the eye socket and the, the bridge of the nose, the lips. Those forms are physically sharper. The anti-helix of the ear is physically sharper. Um, the the uh, chin, the jawline, is physically sharper on this model. With some models, it's going to be physically softer. Now, the reverse is also true with softer edges. Softer edges you can pull away from. Uh, so if I don't want the viewer to pay attention to her forehead, then I'll soften it like I did there. Uh, so that's one focus. The other is it's just physically softer, like the cheek. Physically softer. The forehead, physically softer. The curvature of this Diet Coke, physically softer than the edges on my camera which are physically harder and that's it i mean those are pretty much the only reasons now hardness and softness is a matter of feel um, it, it, things can be over softened and they can be over sharpened and it's inevitable we're gonna do that but it's a matter of feel uh, now for example some things that are sharper, you might actually want to soften them a little bit more depending on your specific composition. But is in general, if something is really curved and the radius of your curve is really large, then it is easier. Oh, hey, Hades, thanks for saying hi. Sorry, I missed that. Um, so if your curvature is much more broad, then it's going to be a much softer edge. Like the forehead, if your curvature is less broad but still round, then there's going to be less of that kind of ghostly softness and more of like faster plane changes. Like the nose, the bulb of the nose, and the, um, the eye, and the lip. So hopefully that helps. Um... Let's see, so from Rob CP, I struggle with everything, no worries there, but mainly values and color harmony. Values and color harmony, I can totally attest to that, that is very difficult. So from Jesse, you struggle with proportions and placement the most. From Leon, on a daily level, motivation and energy, maintenance and finding the drive, how do we find balance? sort of a uh how do we find the balance sort of a question um 
motivation and energy and balance um this is especially true if you're a full-time artist um and even if you're not a full-time artist it's very difficult to um find motivation and um i tell you one of the best ways to find motivation in anything not just painting is perspective perspective is going to be the best way for you to find motivation so meaning give yourself a little bit of distance because if you're looking too much into what you're doing you're going to tire yourself um, and you don't want to do that so you want to have some perspective for me what keeps me balanced with um with painting is I am a very beginner pool player, but this is my carbon fiber. I know I don't even need one, but I like to have it. It's my carbon fiber McDermott um, playing shaft. Pocket billiards, believe it or not, it keeps me balanced. This is almost like a paintbrush to me. Um, almost like a paintbrush to me. It is very important for you to have something else to balance you because if you're a hundred percent into something no matter what it is you're going to tire yourself from it you need to have a balance in, in different things but then also going into an art museum like if you're going to go to a museum like if i want specific motivation for painting um like i'll go look at rembrandt for like hours and hours and hours and that that, that will also motivate me as well so uh from lady death you struggle with lightness rob cp struggle with drawing too i'm just starting to learn i've always traced but now i have to try and to improve my drawing from user 106 feedback hard to know how my actual struggles are when i don't get useful criticism lots of problems though don't get me wrong let's see oh i'm glad you like the answer uh rob cp so it seems like everyone's talking more about drawing and placement of things placement of things is um, a big one but but definitely if you're watching this live and if, if there's something you specifically struggle with please comment it down here um, this will help me get an idea why don't i just ask the question what would you like me to focus on next time let me just ask the question what would you like me to focus on next time because this time it was all about values and like you saw it's five specific values still with some edges that's all it's ever going to be is very few values and the edges in between them it changes if there's still life in there if there's more stuff in the environment then it, it changes the equation um because there's more stuff, but there's not more, there really isn't that much more stuff other than her headdress. And her earring, by the way, which was painted, the highlight was painted with the back end of the brush. So that shows you kind of like how I, I think about these things. Uh, thanks for watching from India, Shavu. From Leon, uh, you wrote, I can feel that as me versus the world sometimes, a full time artist, and yeah, you're spot on, need to get out more oh no problem so yeah as a fellow full-time artist leon you know how it is sometimes it's we do what we love and we're fortunate that we do what we love but we're in a precarious situation because there's nobody there telling us you need to get to work specifically at this time so you need to have the discipline to do it and i'm not i'm not perfect with that um i disciplined myself to be here to film this yesterday so that I could be here today and I need to discipline myself to film another one so I can be here another day hopefully very soon um, so it is good to have a balance because as I'm out playing pool for hours and hours and hours and hours like I'm looking at the cue ball and I'm like oh look at the light and shadow on that I'm like oh I want to paint again so it, it's, it's just a, a matter of motivation so Lady Death wrote, uh, planes on the face are the bones, muscles of the face. We can focus on the anatomy, yeah. 
Uh, planes and anatomy. That's that would be a good one. So from Rob CP, he would love to focus on how you start. How you start the painting, I know you have explained in your videos, but it goes a bit too quick for me. Okay, so that's another potential. So right now we've got two. We've got anatomy of the face involving the planes and all that. And then we've got, um, we've got uh, more on the beginning of it. So, hey, Barbara. Oh, good. I'm glad I motivate you. So, um, so everyone, again, it's just refinement of the edges. We're almost there. This is almost finished. Now, like I said, the camera is very important. Now, look at how it photographed. So the photograph is going to be different than what you're seeing on the camera, even though it's the same darn thing. Uh, so we're getting there. Very close. You've seen most of the footage. You only lost a little in the beginning because of my hair. So from Frentith as a beginner to oils and painting in general, is there an exercise you would recommend? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. And you're going to hate my answer. Um, but as a beginner, I'm going to suggest that you do as much painting from life as possible. Don't paint from a photo reference. Paint from life or from a master study. I'm not calling myself a master. I'm far from it. But this will be a reference for you to work from to recreate um, however as a very very um, early beginner the self-portrait is going to be your best thing to work from because if your interest is in portraiture the self-portrait is going to get you there if your interest is in anything other than portraiture the self-portrait is going to get you there because it's it's just so hard portrait is just so hard once you get used to it, then it's like everything else is much easier. Like with pool, like pocket billiards. If you play on a big table all the time, when you have to go to a little table, it's just that much easier. It's just the, the way it goes. That's what I would really suggest that you do. Self-portraits and painting from other paintings. So from Jonas, uh, hello there. Oh, thank you, Rob CP. And by the way, everyone, this painting will be available for sale in the future, the near future. I've got maybe like 10 or 15 of these 8 by 10s I'm going to start to have for sale soon. Hey, friend says, oh, good. Oh, okay, so you currently have a, a still life set up. Well, that's good to learn from, too. But definitely the challenge of a self-portrait is, even though it's not going to be as fun for most of us it is going to be a much better way to uh to learn faster so from up and coming artists what brand of oil paint do you use mainly um winsor newton and gamblin i totally forgot to mention i'm not using lead white right now because i moved to an apartment um and i'm actually cleaning my brushes in a bucket and i don't want to get lead and cadmium in my kitchen sink and bathroom sink because those are the only two sinks I have. So I'm not using lead at the moment. Um, so my white is actually Gamblin's flake white replacement. Every other color you see there is either Winsor Newton or Gamblin, I think with the exception of the red, which is a Williamsburg. But I would rather just use a Gamblin for that anyway. So Gamblin and Winsor Newton. Hey, Francis. Oh, good. You're planning on doing self-portrait between Christmas and New Year's. My recommendation is do a bunch of them and only spend about, like, at most three hours on each. Don't don't try to spend more than, like, three hours at a time. And do as many as you can. Hey, Jonas. Is portrait painting a series of corrections? I heard that from many artists. So my teacher, John DeMartin, I'm going to write his name down. Uh, I think everyone should look him up. John de Martin. He's also a uh, published author. Uh, he wrote his own book and it got published and all that stuff. So I think you can find his book on Amazon. Uh, but John de Martin taught me so much about drawing. And what he would say is a drawing is a series of corrections. A painting is nothing more than uh, drawing with color. 
Therefore, a painting is a series of corrections with color. A likeness is nothing more than the confirmation of an accurate drawing. These are things that John DeMartin would say. I may be paraphrasing it somehow, but, but that's the gist of what he said. Um, so, yes, anything is a series of corrections, not just a portrait. Everything, everything is a series of corrections. Uh, so from Beanpot, I started using baby oil to clean my brushes. I find it's much less obstructive to the house. Ah, baby oil. Interesting. I don't have any of that. I don't have baby oil, but I can definitely... Francis, have you tried old Holland paints? Yes, I have. Uh, I really like them, but they're a bit too pricey for what they are. So um, I I like them, but old Holland is a little bit more of a hype than it is um, functional, really. Um, I'd say the the best brand, if you're gonna stick with one brand, is probably Gamblin. I'd say that's probably one of the best ones. Hey, Francis. Yep, John can draw. Oh, yeah. And if you know who he is, you know how fortunate I am that he was one of my teachers. Um, so, awesome teacher. Rob CP, can PVA glue be used as gesso? I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, PVA glue, you might get away with it, but you only want to use it to stiffen the fabric of your canvas when you're stretching a raw canvas. And then you want to use either um actually use pva glue and then i would suggest using a acrylic primer and then sealing it with um with a oil primer i i think that is a little bit safer uh but i would use uh an acrylic primer i like liquitex professional acrylic gesso uh for my gesso and then i i have a a lead primer that i guess i'm not going to use that much of anymore these days but maybe i will Maybe I will. Maybe I should just clean my brushes outside in a bucket. That might be a better choice. But um, I wouldn't use PVA glue. So from Jonas. Oh, good. I'm glad you liked the uh, explanation. So we've got about three minutes left in the painting footage. Like I said, the photograph is going to look a little different because it's a photograph. But you'll see there's not really that much left. Not really that much left uh, to this. And at this point, actually, the uh, canvas is front and center. So as you see, there's a little bit of movement. That's because I'm actually standing right behind the cam uh, the camera. So the camera is like right in front of me like this when I'm painting. And I did this for two reasons. One is because this is where the thumbnail came from. And two is because at the end, I want you to see at least some footage with uh, minimal distortion there. So from Leon, Michael Harding has a good primer. Oh, uh, definitely. I, ha I have Michael Harding for um, my lead primer. And so now we're just signing the painting with a sable brush. I could have edited this one. I should have, but I didn't edit it. But it gives us more time to talk. Let's see. Do you use hog brushes? In the beginning stages and finish with synthetics or mongoose sable. So I start off with these and I finish with these. So these are bristle brushes. Links in the description of the video. These are, uh, not prints, these are, uh, they're sables. I don't think they're hog bristle, but I'm uh, not sable. These are bristles. I don't think they're hog bristles. I don't know actually. But um, these are Silver Brush Grand Prix. Si I use size 4s and size 2. Size 2s for the most part. Gilberts. And then for the detail work, I like to use Pure Red Sables. Silver Brush brand. Uh, Pure Red Sables. Um, I had started using them because that's what Nelson Shanks used. And um, Nelson Shanks, um, I was fortunate enough to meet him while he was still alive. Um, really the best i'd say uh the uh it's just the best the best for finishing stuff so there you go there is the photograph of the finished painting so that is the ending of this painting and demonstration so quickly we're going to recap now so this is now a summary okay so it began 
with a blank canvas started with a suggestion of where the features were going to go. Then we masked in, we blobbed in basically just a big blob, as you see there, of color, and we sculpted it out. And then we had five simple values. And then we pushed those values more subtle, more subtle. And then it was just five values and some edges. And you can see how things change. And even the mouth, everything changed with color. All of it changed with color there. Um, so that is the, the ending there of this one. Let me go back to the picture there. Okay, so that is the grand finale. And this will be posted on Instagram right after this ends. Those of you that are interested in taking your online art education with me further, please consider checking out my online classes on uh, patreon.com slash artist also listed in the description box of this video. And again, starting at $10 a month, you are able to get feedback from me weekly on your paintings. So let's see, uh, let's look at the last minute questions here. Uh, so from Rob CP, you captured the lady's emotion beautifully. I would look at your painting for ages if it was in a museum, trying to work out what she's thinking about. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I did try to put some kind of like emotion into it. So thank you for noticing that. Thank you. Hey, Frentis, I'm glad you liked the answer. Oh, no worries, Leon. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching Lady Death. Oh, thank you, Jonas. So, um, the uh, next time for me will hopefully be... Um, hopefully be on Thursday. Hopefully, uh, the next time. I'm going to try to do Tuesdays and Thursdays, possibly Wednesdays. Um, because I'm in my own space now, it's just much easier for me. It's just a matter of me actually filming paintings so I can create these kind of uh, videos for you. And it's HD 1080p. You got to see everything in high resolution. Um, yeah, thank you, Rob CP. So uh, it looks like everyone wanted me to focus, or at least I only got two comments on what to do next time, but uh, it looks like proportions, anatomy, and motivation. So maybe next time we'll focus on surface structure, like anatomy. Um, next time we'll focus on anatomy. Hey, Barbara, most likely Thursday around this time, 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Most likely 10 or 10.15 on Thursdays. But you will get an updated um, streaming schedule for Patreon because I will be doing this uh, on Patreon. And it's looking like Patreon is going to be 2.30 uh, Wednesdays and um, Saturdays just because of schedule concerns and things like that but but more about that later more about that later i'll definitely keep uh, keep you updated barbara so it looks like there are no last minute questions oh there we go um so from frentis color relationships in a portrait that's a possibility color relationships so it's between color relationships uh motivation for painting and anatomy so Color relationships, motivation, anatomy. So um, I'll pick between one of those um, for, for the topic of next time. Also, just feel free to ask me any questions during the stream. Even though this video was focused primarily on values, I was still able to answer questions on colors and things like that. So it's just basically it helps me title the video because you know how important it is to title videos but certainly we can talk about color relationships um in the next one even if it's titled something else um and even if it's titled color relationships we can focus on we can talk about other things like proportions and structure and things like that so um 
Motivation can be a spring topic. There you go. That's true. That's true. All right. So it looks like that's all the questions. All right. So thank you for watching, everyone. Um, remember, we're going to be doing these streams more consistent. It's going to take me a while to get to a more... Um, finite schedule but we're getting there so all things go well we'll be back on thursday if not we will certainly be back on tuesday remember these are going to be around 10 a.m eastern daylight time now uh, because of the schedule change i don't know how to pronounce your name nabil thank you so much for watching from algeria thank you thank you so much for watching so once again thank you all so much for uh, watching this video whether you watched it live or as a pre-recorded video remember as always if you want to take your online art education with me further please check out my online classes on my patreon which is linked in the description box of this video i really hope that this helps you out i wish you the very best in all of your artwork and i will see you on the next one